With profound, humble gratitude and love to all venerated, enlightened masters, we bow to the Almighty in soulful gratefulness for gifting us with their holy, blessed presence. May all beings be awakened by the divine grace. Part two of four. Etc. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD. Műsoraink sok nyelvet tartalmaznak. Kérjük, tekintse meg itt suprememastertv.com per schedule és suprememastertv.com per BMD. Vegan. A greatness statement. Squishy! Hey, Squishy! Feel the cheek, Squishy! Peace is happening around our world. There are many countries who have taken actions to promote peace and foster amity among peoples and governments. The following is one of them. Etc. October 2023, Taiwan, also known as Formosa, says peace with China is the only option. By creating peace, we all can make a loving, serene, and prosperous world. The most powerful daily prayer for any time and before meditation, which is the order from God and Supreme Master Ching Hai, shares with us by His Blessed Grace. We humbly worship Praise, thank, obey, and love God Almighty, the Most High, the Greatest, for world vegan, world peace, and our soul liberation. We thank, love, praise the only Son of God, who is the ultimate Master for our salvation. We follow the teaching of all the saints and sages. We thank, love, and praise them who are the representatives of God for our spiritual elevation.
Hey, respected world leaders. Making war is fun for you. Yeah, why not? You will just watch the games, that war game on TV, in your safe bunker, or in your million dollars, billion dollars palaces, where you're safe and sound and bodyguards and security men all surround you. The head that was severed is not yours. So why worry? You know, it is from some poor country's kid. And the husband who died is not yours. It's not you who died and left your wife behind. It is some poor soldiers who you ordered to go into harm's way. Yeah, all this is fun for you. And then Sunday you go to the church and you confess to so many priests with an easy sum of money. Uh, and your sin will be wiped away. As if God could be bribed with your blood bills by the hands of the priests that might have choked another kid the night before for some of his lowly sexual desires. Uh, you will match all that. And if you ever have a chance to go to heaven, you will report to God, Ah, I killed many of your little children. You think that's the way you should live your life? Go ahead. Nobody can stop you. You have <laughs> almost like limitless taxpayers' money to go and burn in war. You care not that millions of your co-citizens have to worry about the next meal or where they would earn some little money tomorrow morning to pay for their gas, which is skyrocketing right now because some people control the gas, using that as strangulating weapons, not just bombs and bullets. Yeah, it's all fun games for you, but for the real people, it's not fun. They pay you. They pay you exceedingly a lot, and you use that money, that power, to kill other humans instead. I don't know how to pray for you anymore. I don't know how to tell God about any reason that he should forgive you. I have no more excuses to tell God to pardon you. I have no more words to beg God to consider taking you up to heaven after your breath leaves your body behind. Oh, man, one would shudder thinking of what you have to bear in hell, but we can't reason with you. We can't even pray for you. Our words don't come out in proper prayers because we know deep down that God will not listen to any excuses for a person who has been pampered and privileged in so many ways, so rich beyond measure and uses all so that privilege, takes all the money of the countries just to burn in war, burn people's houses, burn children's bodies, alive even, burn away the husbands, burn away the wives who are supposed to live under one roof together with their children bringing them to school, building up their future, taking them to the park, watching them swim in the sea, happy, happy together. That's no more under your dictatorship. The houses that burn down to the ground with all the possessions in it is not your house. The field that's been laden 
with many bombs in it is not your field. It's some poor farmers who rely on that to give themselves survival means and to share with the whole world whoever needs. No matter how much they lost, it's not your loss. Uh, the field that's laden with mines and bombs is not yours, so you don't care that the farmer would go out to tend his field and it's just blown into pieces. You don't care because you will always have food. And the best ever food. But that's what you think. You never know if the war comes into your country. You might be one of the victims. Not to talk about hells waiting for you. And every day, the devils will grind you into a dust-like substance. Then relentlessly repeat it again, again and again. And you can never stop, you can never run anywhere. For I don't know how long. Could be forever. Because your sin is too great to be absorbed by any merciful power. They would just spit it out. I mean, the stuff like what you have done, the sins like what you have created, can never be absorbed by love, power, forgiveness. Very difficult. I don't know if even if you repent, your sins will be immediately absorbed and destroyed or not. But at least you should try. Try all your might to stop the war, not try all your might to continue or create a new one. No one can help you then if you continue to create suffering for others. The market, the selling things, will be all blasted by your bomb. You could not care less because you will always have food. You are the leader. There are always people who serve you, who give you everything you need, just at your fingertips. All you have to do is just push a button and whatever you want in the whole world, no matter how far, it will come to you. And if you lose this house, uh, you will have another palace somewhere else. But that's what you think. God has other plans sometimes, and it will surprise you. All these things that you measure out this out to innocent victims will come back to you manifold, maybe even in your lifetime already. You remember, in Russia, the top one of the war gurus who advised the president about all kinds of inside strategies for the war. Now his daughter was just killed on the street. Like other victims of war. Cell phone video said to show the fireball from the car bomb on the outskirts of Moscow. Dead at the scene, Daria Dujina, daughter of influential ultranationalist Alexander Duggan, an outspoken supporter for the war in Ukraine. The target is believed to have been Dugan himself, a man often described as Putin's brain. It could be your daughter next. That could be the medicine, your own medicine, to taste. And even if it has not happened yet, I think you can imagine how bitter it could be. I'm just a fragile old woman, like many of the women in your war. I don't have any weapons to go out there to protect anyone. No match for your power of destruction. I can only feel sorry for the helpless innocent children 
with those young handsome men elderly dog cat cow bird and big people who are murdered or maimed or disabled by your weapons of destruction I think God doesn't want to hear me anymore no matter how often I pray no matter how much I pour my heart out in pain and love for the suffering humanity at large I think God doesn't want to hear any of us anymore but I'm still trying I think whatever I said most people don't understand they don't listen even though it's so simple as if a five year old kid could understand because they just talk talk they learn from school how to talk they learn from the internet how to talk but they don't understand they don't even practice what they talk even their own talk they won't practice they don't understand much about it they say i love you but they don't mean it they don't even know what love is so it's kind of useless talking to you so go ahead make war then because you choose to live wickedly destructively but you just don't know how sorry i feel for you because you will be punished beyond imagination alone in hell only with the devils nobody will hear you nobody will help you no matter how much money you have you can't buy your freedom from those horrible hells you can never get out of course you don't believe me because you don't see it the thing is it hurts me to know all this to see all the hells is much worse than what's going on on this planet not to talk about we have to fight climate change to do everything to stop this globe this beautiful world beautiful earth from becoming an inferno or even obliterated and your children your grandchildren your great grandchildren will bathe in this fire and you may be already old and already bathe in the same was in hell there are not many words i can say because not many will listen i'm grateful to god that i still am alive and can try my best with the hope to rescue this world but i'm old enough already many people die younger than my age so even if i die i have nothing <laughs> to regret except that i am not powerful enough do not have time enough in my lifetime to destroy all this karma that guys like you created and drag more innocent beautiful people into it into your war and then create bad karma for themselves also or it's up to make karma immeasurable which could engulf and destroy this world they also have to bear some punishment maybe much less than yours but still they don't deserve that but what to do they are in your hands they don't have much power 
Most have nowhere to go, and if they open their mouths, you will stuff it, and you will drag them, throw them in jail. My God, what for you go to the church? Because you don't understand anything about God's teaching. And that priest in the church, I doubt if he even understands anything either. I don't know what hell you came from, but you will be back there soon. We don't live on this planet forever, but we might be in that hell forever, and this time is for real. Oh, dear God, please protect the innocent victims of these evil leaders. They care not about anyone else except their own devil intention. My God, I leave it to you to handle them. I have no more words to beg you, to pray to you, to reason with you for them or for any similar people. I'm just praying you have pity for the innocent children, for the helpless woman and the elderly people who lost everything in war. They are helpless. Please consider them in your grace. Please let them live in peace. And if they have to go, please take them up to the peaceful heaven. You have many. Please spare some for them. Amen. I love you, God, me, my people, and many good world people love you. Please accept our humble love, because we have nothing else to offer you. Everything belongs to you anyway, even our lives. If we can be of any more help to this world, to your children, then please let us continue to live in peace. If not, then may you decide whatever you want to do with our lives. We love you, my Lord. Thank you. May you be everything you be. Amen. Oh, dear God, (laughs) sometimes I feel this world is too much for me personally to continue to exist, but I'm still carrying hope to help this planet to save people's souls. And I do really hope that you God will you turn. <sighs> Repent to God. Ask um, him for forgiveness. Ask forgiveness from the whole world and repair your damage to their people, to their country. With God's grace, then you may be free from hell, but might not be scot-free from other kinds of horrible wars, like the way you create war and you make people suffer. Aratem is just two and has shrapnel wounds in his stomach. His mother, father and grandparents were badly wounded. Marsha, 15, has lost a leg and fractured an arm. А хлопчик, шестирічний хлопчик, зараз його в реанімації вже немає, перевели в хірургію. Він в перший день з черепно-мозговою травмою поступив, з пораненням голови. Поступив, він казав, без сліз. This man's daughter is being treated here, but his other daughter was killed, along with his grandchild. Я подбігаю до Мінічки, кричу, Домінічка, Домінічка. 
а она лежит. Я Наташ срываю повязку, какая была шар, ноги перевязываю ей. Ну, девочки мои любимые, не уберу я вас. One of her children was killed last night. Cradling her surviving child, she pleads. We don't know where to run to. Who will bring back our children? Who? They have to run away from their home, their country, starving, wounded, maimed and handicapped, losing family, friends, all that you will experience in another world, if not in this world. And you'll be forever terrified, running with nowhere to go. You will experience everything that you have caused in the war for other beings, for other people. You will experience all that alone, no one to help you, no one to comfort you. The only ones who are with you are those who chase you, who terrify you, who hurt you, who harm you, who make you feel extremely, extremely scared, horrified, fearful. But you won't die. You can't hide even. And it will be non-stop. Phew just to think about that. Oh my God, I wish you know some of it. I wish that when you sleep, God gives you some vision, some dream to awaken you, to let you know that the consequences of what you have been doing to people, their houses, oh, to animal people, to trees, and to the earth, The monstrous harvest is immense, immense, immense. Similar to the butchers and the animal people, industrial, factory owners and workers, you will be treated exactly like the way you're treating the animal people in your slaughterhouse, in your factory. But it will just continue forever. That's the only difference. The lesser degree of fate awaits animal people, abusers, like in lab testing, eaters of animal people, products, etc. In hell, it will be non-stop, day and night. The way you treated the animal people, you will be treated exactly like that. It's just forever, forever in hell. And don't say, I am not warning you. I'm not warning you. I'm just telling you the truth. In case you have ears to listen, please kneel down now. Repent all your misdeeds. Turn around. Make up for it. Do something else for your living. There are many other jobs to do, no need to kill to live. As you sow, so shall you reap. The law of the physical universe is exact. Just turn around, run away from it, then you can be saved. As if you are going wrongly to the north, and you realize that you need to go to the south, just turn around, then whatever happens in the north, will not affect you. Turn around. Run away from sins. Repent. Do good deeds. Pray to God for forgiveness. And don't do bad again. That's all you need to do. Be vegan. Make peace, all of you. Please. And ask God to forgive you. You could never escape. 
in the life after. If they don't catch you already in this lifetime, charge you in court, lock you in a jail cell, then you will experience all that, worse than that, in the life after. I have no reason to lie to you. I'm in a safe place myself, even though you have spies all over. But God protects me. I'm just saying this for the sake of the victims who suffer so much in your wickedness and war, war with humans, or and war with helpless animal people. Ah, uh, oh dear God. I know. I know you want to destroy this planet, but please, there are many good people. Not all of them are warmongers or bad. And even the fighters, the soldiers in the war, none of them want it. They just are coerced into doing it. They had to. They joined the army in peacetime, and they never thought that they would have to go to war. Even they might think it's possible, but it's such a like fleeting thinking until they experience the horrible reality of the bloody, murderous war themselves. This was the moment Pavel Filyadov cut ties with Russia, tearing up his military ID and Russian passport flushing them down a toilet in an airport bathroom in Paris. A few weeks later, this former paratrooper met with us to tell his story and share his disgust with the military he's risking everything to expose. I kept thinking obsessively that literally, if I survived, I would do everything to stop it, to change something. Filgadov was part of a military regiment that invaded Kherson, Ukraine in the early hours of February 24th. But even just a day before the equipment rolled in, he said soldiers were being misled about why they were there. Our regiment commander made us line up and said, stop spreading gossip, stop calling home talking nonsense. I'm telling you, there are three more days of training and then you'll all be home. He said he only realized Russia was attacking Ukraine after an order came down for his unit to destroy a bridge. In a manifesto he later posted to social media, he described the disarray on the battlefield, a Russian military equipped with patriotism instead of good training, support and modern technology. He wrote some soldiers began to shoot themselves to get the government money and get out of this hell. But I say this, Russia has now been captured by some kind of mafia. We were not told anything but march forward. The commander just told, you are going there. We were going in a column. When we started to cross the border, I asked the commander, why are we doing this? He answered me to shut up. I didn't know that I was going to Ukraine. They deceived me. We were told that we would go there and come back. They told us that we will go into the fields, set up tents and live there. We didn't ride deep into Ukraine when we were hit. My car blew up and I was pushed out of it with the explosion wave. We became captives in the town. We didn't shoot back. We became captives in the town. We didn't shoot back. We laid our weapons at once. We were deceived and sent to war like cannon fodder. I didn't think that I will have to kill someone. I knew nothing. I was afraid. We are being sent to war like cannon fodder. Everyone gets shot at once. We were going in a column and almost everyone in it dies. I didn't want to fight. I wanted to live. I will say that Ukrainian military are nice guys. They did not hit me and gave me food. For what? Everywhere here live peaceful people and no one wants war. No one attacked Russia, and I don't understand what they want from this war. Dear God, please, they are your children. If I could take all that and suffer for all of them, then please do it. They are all ignorant, they are innocent, they don't know much about your law and don't feel much of your love. Please let them feel your love. 
wake them up instead of furnishing them. Oh, furnishing is horrible. And if they don't wake up and feel your love in this lifetime, then soon they will not be able to for trillions or gazillions of years, you know it, until they can become any living being again, not to talk about being a human. That will take longer. They don't know human life is so precious. They don't really know how horrible hell is. They don't have time to think and to feel your love. Please have mercy. They are just too deluded, too busy into this life and death game of this illusional world. They don't forget you on purpose, my Lord. Please believe me. They were just made too blind, deaf and dumb, too busy with any little things to survive and sometimes even cannot survive. Please have mercy, God. Here is not in heaven. Nothing here is easy for all beings to stay alive, safe and well. Even people who are rich and healthy don't know how to conduct their life. They go out, die easily by car accident, by boat, sinking by airplane exploding just like that you saw it on tv do you watch tv my lord we have sampled many of these trouble world incidents to show them to people hoping to wake them up i'm sorry i forgot you don't need tv yeah <laughs> You know everything. You are omniscient, omnipresent. How can I sleep and eat well with all this going on to the poor humans and animal people? They might have good intentions, my Lord, but they can't act it out because life just imprison them in endless, endless wheels of suffering, pain, retribution, survival. By survival, uh, I mean needs. Yes. It's very difficult for them to wake up and remember you. I have been trying hard all these decades to try to remind them, do whatever I can. But I just feel so frustrated. So many times I feel helpless. I feel this world is getting more and more like hell. Some parts are hell already. I don't know how you bless me so much that I do not collapse with all this suffering that I witness, that I am not broken down with all the pain I feel from humans, animal, people, trees, and so on. Just as if their pains are mine. I thank you for that, for keeping me strong, at least partially, mentally, and physically. But many people cannot cope, my Lord. They kill themselves or they sink into depression and they have to use alcohol and drugs in order to forget. But the more they use them, the more they become weakened and able to stand tall and protect themselves from all kinds of attacks. Because wherever they look, mostly it's just suffering, pain and sorrow. And now we have a lot of trouble, disasters, and uh, climate heat up, sun flares, sun storms, not just wind storms, more rain storms, but even sun storms. 
So many things are threatening our survival on this planet already. You know very well. The black angel is not very merciful to all beings on this planet because all of humanity, more or less, did something wrong. Only some of them, you turn, repent, and try to mend their bad deeds with the grace that you bestow on them. Please use your power to wake them up so that they will not be lost forever, because this time they won't be forgiven that easily, because life after lives, bad karma, bad sins, have piled up in the record of their existence. And we are not blaming you, my Lord. We just praying so you please understand this world is not easy for anyone. It's, it's, it's more easy to be tempted and do bad than to be uplifted and remember your name. This is just the system of this world that drags people down and they could hardly stand up if they are down. And even if they're standing up, they are just almost like zombies. They don't have a lot of time to think too much. They are just so busy working, and when they come home, they have to take care of shopping, washing children, the elderly and sick people. And they're eating the wrong things, like the animal people stuff. First, they get sick all the time. They have to go to the doctor, go to the hospital, and endure a lot of suffering as well. (coughs) Everything they have, they must work with sweat, tears, and even blood. (coughs) This life is punishing them so much that even if they are sick, they can't stop to take a rest. They work so hard, but sometimes things happen that they lose everything and become homeless. Even if they have a home, they don't have money to pay for the minimum comfort to keep them warm, to keep themselves and their children comfortable and fed or even attending school. This life is not heaven, my Lord. The souls who came here are being oppressed, being poisoned, being deluded, to, to not be able to think anymore. They even lose faith in heaven and then do not fear hell because they don't know any of these things. Uh, and no one in heaven would understand the pain and sorrow that humanity has to go through, not to talk about the animal people who have been chained, confined in such very little crates that they could not even turn around all day, all night, all their lives until they become murdered in some dark corner of the world. In so much pain and sorrow. (laughs) This world is not an easy place for any soul to to survive, my Lord. Please, (laughs) and please have second thoughts and let them have a chance to wake up. Please, Use all your power, your means, to wake them up. Use me in any way you can. Kill me, if that helps them to wake up. One person dies, many people live. It doesn't matter, my Lord. You can destroy me, scatter my soul everywhere. 
as if I am one of those sinners that that are going to experience this kind of terrifying lot last forever. If that helps all beings to be spared of suffering and to be liberated to go home. If they suffer, how will I enjoy? This world is, is not paradise, my Lord. Please remember that. The souls did not know what they were going to face until they came here. And once they came down here, it's difficult for them to return because of so many traps, so many tricks, so many temptations, so many demands that they didn't know exist in heavens. They didn't know how. They still don't know how to react to them. Even if for some split second they remember you, many other things will overwhelm that thought and drown it away and drag them into confusions and drowsiness into knowinglessness again. I have no more words to pray to you and I pray to you, worship you every day. You know that. But my heart cannot be healed. Even though I know your blessing, I feel your love, and I'm so grateful for it. But my heart cannot feel happy because the whole world is not happy. And most of them will be punished severely in hell or scattered all over the whole universe and will never find themselves again in one piece. They will be able to talk like I'm talking to you, never be able to even pray to you, uh, never be able to taste any good food, breathe any good air, go swimming or enjoy some simple physical pleasure on this planet or anywhere else in the universe again for endless time. Lost forever, wailingly scattered everywhere. And then even gathering them becomes, you know, useless. Like stones, like pebbles, anything but a decent living being like the humans here and the animal people or trees even. Dear God Almighty, who knows everything? I don't know why I'm talking so much. It's just to talk to you, hoping that you will listen and help humanity, please. Uh. Please don't turn your head away from them. This time is... Uh, it feels like a forever time, but it will end. Uh, I don't know how to prove it to humanity so that they will listen to you, that they will worship you, they will repent to you and become good kids again, like when they were born from your grace in heaven. Uh, I talk to you because I have no one to talk to. It's been four years since my isolation. I'm alone in the studio-like lifestyle here. You know, one room, one kitchen, one washroom. That's all I need, actually. It's much better than many people who don't have a home, who live on the street in some terrible hot desert or frozen land as refugees with some just plastic on top of their heads and eating whatever they can bake 
whatever is handed out to them. I have nowhere to go, no home, not much hope for tomorrow. I'm always grateful for whatever you give me, my Lord, always grateful. I don't need much, really. But to think that this beautiful planet is going to be dirt, going to be dust, and going to be no more, it really pains my heart. Just to see that vision, that this beautiful planet is no more gone forever in such a way. No one can bear it, no one can bear it. Because the whole of humanity, or most of humanity, will have too much suffering after they leave this planet because there's no more planet. Just to think of that, it, it pains me so much. Even if I can see heaven, I can feel your love and blessing, but countless beings do not. Oh my God, is there anything more I can do? <laughs> Please change the system. <laughs> Please forgive. Please wake him once up. Please. <laughs> Please don't let them be gone just like that. Oh, they're your children, my Lord. I just don't know how to be good. This life makes them too busy. Drives them into deep ignorance. I know you sent your sons and daughters to this world countless times, but how many people listen to them, how many persons can they reach, and how many even believe them, even if they reach them. Because they've been so blindfolded forever here, even though they still look alive, but they're half dead. Oh, uh, I don't know whom to tell, so I talk to you. I'm sorry to burden you, my Lord. Well, I can't, I cannot not tell you. What else can I do? I tried in so many ways. And you have helped me to try many ways as well, but it doesn't seem to help too much. Not as much as you would like, not as much as I would hope. Uh, I don't know anymore what else to say to you. May you be blessed. May you be happy, my Lord, with whatever way you can be. And may you be reconsidering your plan for all beings on this planet. Bless you, my Lord, Almighty God, the Most High, the Greatest, most merciful, most beloved, the most benevolent, most forgiving, almighty Lord. We thank you anyway for whatever you give us. And we understand that whatever happens, you handle us. It's just, it's just not easy to to accept. <laughs> we love you. We love you. Forever love you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Love you. <laughs> Amen.
veganism isn't a lifestyle of depreciation, but of abundance. When you change your perspective, adopting this compassionate lifestyle becomes easier. Shruti Jain, vegan. Be vegan. Make peace. Do good deeds. Heaven, Godspeed. speed.